Coming up, a Sad Styles production. Get into it! And welcome to the Retrograde Video Game Podcast, where this week we look back on some of our favorite video games of all time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do. My name's Adrian Baskin. With me, as always, <laughs> is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself. Mikey Aaron Neuralizer were... Oh, because you'd forget. Yes. The Neuralizer from the Men in Black Think, franchise. I didn't know if you would get that reference. I love Men in Black 1. <laughs> See, I was going to say, if I can take or leave any of the movies from that franchise, I'm going to take number three. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Once Johnny Knoxville came in, I was like, you know what? I think I'm so good. So I haven't actually seen number three. He's in yes. number three. He has two heads. Really? Or a second smaller head that talks to him. Mm, and it's not on his dick. No, that would have been very mm, funny. That would have been very yeah. funny. And very of Johnny Knoxville. Exactly. Yeah. No, number one is really good. And it's it's good in like a good movie way, not like in a fun, like, uh, you're like, oh, this is so silly kind oh, of way. Yeah. Like it's Barry Sonderville directing like a movie that's like, legitimately very good there is a, the scene where i can't believe we're talking about this, the scene where uh where k talks to will smith and says like you know everything you ever have known will leave yes. but you'll have a chance to change the world sure and he sits there on a the bench for like all night just uh -huh. staring forward and i'm like yeah i think that's what you would do you'd go i have the opportunity of life but i have to leave everything behind would you okay so so we'll get into it because this week we're going to be taking a look at all the games we would like to wipe our brain mm. wipe from our brain so we can replay again for the very first time that's what we're going to be talking about in a little bit but yeah. let's stick on this yes. for, for, sure, for sure, a sure. quick second here this men in black uh, uh tangent I guess it's not a tangent of this is what we started the episode with. I guess the actual topic is going to be the tangent. But if someone actually came to you I, I think about this and said they yes. were going to like <clears throat> open up the dossier for you and it was and they they came to you with that basis saying whatever is in this is going to shake your foundation. Mm -hmm. Would you would you take it? Do you think I think at the point of you knowing that there is an option out there like that? I think the the genie's out of the bottle. I think so, you okay, have red, to do red it. pill, blue pill then. Because you can yeah. wake up as though it never happened and that you don't even remember that there is a dossier. Yeah. Or you open the dossier. I think when you're, I think when I was younger, especially, you're like, I want to be different. I want to be the special one. I want to do something that, yeah. would, but you start really, because then you think your life gives worth that way. Sure. You're like, oh, it matters. Aaron worth that yeah, way. It gives, it, it gives Aaron worth. So, <laughs> would you like to become an Aaron worth? It's a red pill. In the blue. <laughs> um, that's, yeah. As, uh, it, you know, but as the older I get, it's like maybe there is something special in living a very good life. Oh, I you know would I mean? be, I would be, uh, like the Matrix would be a much different movie if I were Neo. <laughs> <laughs> I would, they'd be like, you can take the red pill, or I'll be like, whatever. What's in that other hand? I can. You, I wake up. I get a full night's sleep. Yeah, <laughs> give me like seventeen of the. I'm gonna, give me would a you like to just good. continue on with your life? You already put it in your mouth, and he's like, or the. What? Oh, you already chose? And you found more red pills like in a jar and you're like shoving them in your mouth. Would I, I like the idea too that you take both. Like what happens then? Oh yeah, that's, oh wow. What if you take both? Uh huh. It, this is like Something unstop horrible. unstoppable force immovable object type thing. It's, <laughs> yeah. I think you just become schizophrenic. I think that's what happens. I just, oh God, Morpheus' reaction when you put both of them, I said, like, oh no, don't. Oh God. Oh, I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> or, or the idea that he takes the blue pill, he's like, well, that was a placebo. I really <laughs> expected you to go red on this one. You're the yes. first person who's ever gone blue. <laughs> Would you like the red pill? Or, you sure? The red pill's <laughs> pretty, you want pretty the, good. or this other one's something. He's like, why, why would you open it? Because I forgot. I didn't think you'd use it. Uh, the, <laughs> can, can you open your hands there again? Um, the, the red and the blue. Now, I'm thinking, yeah. I really don't like cherry. Is that like, what, a blue raspberry or something like that? Yeah, I think it's winter mist. I'm going to base this off taste alone. Uh -huh. I, I, honestly, I'm indifferent towards the whole <laughs> cause. I'm not a huge fan of leather. It okay. shapes pretty bad for me. And those glasses are way too small for your face. <laughs> they are small for his face. <laughs> that was, the, that is just such style where we, looked at those glasses and went man no one's ever gonna look cooler than that guy in the future we don't need arms for yeah, our glasses yes. they just kind of like perch <laughs> precariously on the bridge of our nose i love that we didn't think ahead enough to go the future is amazing we don't need arms and you're like but you still need glasses and you're like uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't think you need the glasses i think they just make you look cool as shit. oh cool well that's cool that yeah. our style still carries over in the future where it's just cool as shit yeah it did i man the fact that we're not dressing like matrix it would have really bummed out little boy mikey like mm -hmm. from back in the day oh, i was yeah. already like stockpiling leather dusters and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> leather dusters that's the whole thing oh my god yeah that uh that fashion got real out of date real fast yeah it did it yeah, did it got subverted by some horrible people <laughs> <laughs> well 
Depends on which side you land. Sure. And there are great points on both sides of the argument. <laughs> there are the people who believe that Asian Smith is a, I don't know, uh, 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 someone who fights for justice, I guess. Oh, so, there's pro-Agent Smith people? Well, I mean, I got I to assume like the red pillars or like the 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 the, the right wingers who have co-opted oh, yeah. that term. Do they watch that movie and assume that Agent Smith is a good guy? Or do they just oh. not know what Neo is fighting for? The, oh. Or do they just not understand the concept of metaphor and they hear red <laughs> pill and they're like, that's the color of my party. Like, I, I just, where where is this going? I, you know, I can't speak for everybody, but the, the loudest uh, population online uh -huh. seems to just completely misunderstand yeah. what is interesting about Sometimes this. it feels like purposely, <laughs> yeah. if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> yeah. I'm choosing this and I will refuse to hear anything else. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and we chose uh, not to talk about the topic oh, at yes. hand this Sorry, week, yes. uh, uh, which as we mentioned earlier, we're going to be taking a look at some of the, uh, uh, the best games we've we've played that we would most like to erase from our memories, not because we don't want to remember no, them, but because we want the shot to replay them for the first mm -hmm. time. Andrew, uh, I have a lot to talk about in this field. Oh. So I, unless you have anything, any urgent pressing gaming news that you want to get to right now, I kind of think we jump right into it. No, unfortunately I've forgotten every game I've ever played. So. You have? Yeah. Andrew, that's great news for today. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. It's been a real hell getting here. I kept asking, where do you live? Uh, Who are you asking? Uh, everyone that- Tommy you know, Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones, Johnny Knoxville's two heads. Andrew, were you playing with the Neuralizer again? Yeah. You have to imagine in the Men in Black universe that did happen, where he's like, and then just, oh God. <laughs> Where am I? What? Who are you? And he's like, who are you? Just like, do you think they have a safety for the neuralizer? Like they would it's a great idea. Yeah. They have to have a safety. Also, I get, we're back on Men in Black. I don't know how this happened. We were just about to transition. Great movie. But, but you know how, like, you've ever seen these lists or videos where they go over some of the things that were used as movie props that are actually just everyday objects? Oh, yes, sure. Like yes. my favorite is Qui-Gon Jinn using like the Venus razor, like, like the, the leg razor for yes. women. And they just like spray painted it silver and whatever. <laughs> and use it as a walkie talkie. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, like those sorts of things. I wonder what that neuralizer was. Like what, if that was just like a pen that someone had. Totally. It, it does feel like it was like a cigar case or something like exactly. that. And yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, we can just spray paint it and add a light to it. Yeah. yeah. There's, al there's also like, I, I think it was either Star Trek or like Battlestar Galactic or something, which basically just used like those Dyson hand dryers. <laughs> just put them throughout hallways because oh. they look futuristic. It is Star Trek. Cause it, yeah, they're doing stuff. And so people always are like looking at it, like yeah. adjusting it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no, we got that. The Swedish figured that out a long time ago. Yeah. I There is a whole subreddit devoted to that. Uh, oh. That is very interesting to me that, that like, I just always find it very impressive that people People like look around at everyday things. So yeah, this could be a spaceship. Yeah. Like I, that, or you watch Foley artists do something and they're just like crunching celery while watching things. Yes. They're like, that sound good? Yeah, it sounds like a broken board. What do you, okay, th cool. what do you think is more uh, specialized or more you would have a harder time doing? Being a Foley artist or being a DJ that just like, listens to a random song from the, the no, not just being a DJ, Andrew, <laughs> but but being like <laughs> like uh, 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 someone someone who collects like, one random record from the yeah. 1930s and here's like six bars and ends up making it into something completely different. Yeah, there, you see video, videos of that, like especially like Timbaland, like getting into yeah. something and they're like, we can't figure out the song. And he takes like two seconds with like a <laughs> like a Casio keyboard. He's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, no, it's on the wrong note. Bang, bang. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah fuck yeah. I couldn't, I am so not musically talented yeah. that when I hear that, I'm like, how? it's like, it's like someone did magic in front yes. of me. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, how'd you do that? It's like, they're speaking a language that I couldn't possibly understand. Same exactly. thing with like visual artists. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess our skill would be talking mm -hmm. uh, with with nothing planned to talk about yeah and i think maybe some people would hear that and think like oh you just turn the mics on you let her rip yeah and but you no, know this takes a lot of preparation right you Andrew? and i the one of the biggest fears people have is uh, public speaking yeah and i don't think that's one of ours right you know what i mean and i so i think some people go like you just had no problem doing that and you're like i don't know you yeah. know like uh he's gotta let it rip <laughs> oh actually you know what uh, uh, speaking of that uh my, one of my big fears was always like uh losing uh, uh, losing to, to people who are much younger than me at anything. Oh, so okay. like, I, I think I told the story on the podcast earlier that my cousins, uh, uh, who are the, the, the progeny of, of like Olympic athletes. Oh, uh, I played them in basketball and they're like 13 and 15 years old and they fucking smoked me like smoked me is like someone who played basketball quite a bit growing up and I visited them this past weekend and uh, uh, they wanted to play basketball and ping pong and all that stuff and I was like fuck no <laughs> I'm not going through this again but they had rock band set up Whoa. when was the last time you played rock band oh god decades it like is, years it is so fun it, yeah. like it's 
we're due for a rock band resurgence yeah. and I'm going to be first in line to rebuy all those shitty peripherals. <laughs> I'm just going to go straight to the landfill to all the non decomposed <laughs> uh, uh, peripherals that were thrown yeah. out. But yeah, we were playing the original rock band a bunch wow. and <laughs> my, one of, one of uh, my cousins who I don't must be uh, uh, six years old or something along those lines. He, he was loving it. And I played a few, a few game, a few songs on guitar on expert. And he looks at me and he says, and this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. He says, you should be a rock star when you, you grow up. I said, buddy, I'm sorry. I'm already grown up. <laughs> How old is he now? He's six years old. Oh, he's six. Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah. he idolized you. You're like, man, you're really good at this. And you're like, yeah. And I was Yeah. You're like, do you know how to play real guitar? And you should just go like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you tell? Look yeah, at my look hand, at look, look at, at the little click, yeah, click, click, yeah. click click click. It made me feel really good. What was the favorite song that you played at Rock Band? Honestly, uh, so Maps by okay. uh, or, uh, by the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, yep. and also I forgot original Rock Band has When You Were Young by oh. the Killers, which is such a fun song to play, yeah. especially on guitar when you get to that solo bit. Yes, it's so good. But something that I never expected. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the first time I've played uh, Rock Band in front of my girlfriend, mm. and I thought I thought in my mind when I like considered when I saw the rock band thing there I was like I'm gonna play and she's gonna be like she's gonna be pretty impressed I'm yeah. pretty good yeah and then I got halfway through a song and she's just kind of sitting there in the background and I was like I am so embarrassed right <laughs> <now."> <laughs> I'm so embarrassed that these kids who are my cousins who play the game yeah. are like can't do this arbitrary task of like hitting colored fret buttons and strumming along yeah. and yet I can the grown-ass man mm -hmm. she I could just I, I I felt like she was just like He's spending, how much time did he spend doing this? It is and unfortunately, the answer is too much. It is amazing that you could uncork like a secret talent and it'd actually be a bummer. That's what it was. Like, that's exactly that's, what it felt like. That's a remarkable thing. Yeah. That somebody, yeah. It's not like somebody goes like, you know, like, oh, they just crush some like dish. And you're like, wow, you're a good cook. I didn't know that. Yeah. Everyone's happy with that. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, if you brought, uh, no, it would be like, put, if you put out a yo-yo. And he like no, did something yo really, cool. you'd be like, whoa. You know what it might be like, ah, even still, yeah. is this the one skill? Because I'm thinking like like uh, uh, close up magic. Yeah. Everyone kind of groans and yet it is, impressive, it is impressive when someone does it. I think it, if you were like, um, was this actress ever nude? And you're like, yes, it was in this scene. <laughs> Like it just off the off your off the top of your dome, you're like you're like a hundred percent. It's the thirty second minute of this movie. My my player one would absolutely be happier with that talent <laughs> than than uh, my my rock band talent. It was just it was this weird feeling of being like. I'm fucking killing it. Yeah. And then looking around the room of people almost like disgusted at me. Everyone's pulled out their phones <laughs> yes, simultaneously. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> you're doing great. Going back down, looking down. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Yeah. Uh, uh, I regret nothing. I had a fucking blast. <laughs> I regret and I, nothing. <laughs> I can't wait for Rock Band to make its uh, its resurgence because I think it will. I think we're overdue at this point. I would imagine peripherals in general are probably going to come back. I think so. You know what I mean? I think it'll just probably be in your headset and uh -huh. maybe you're, you know, virtually doing it instead True. of actually... Touching the yeah, cold metal suck, plastic. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You say cold metal plastic? Uh, yeah, I wow. did. Now talk about something that will not <laughs> biodegrade. That's metal cold, plastic. Cold metal plastic. <laughs> um, no, let's talk about this, Andrew. Okay. Uh, 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 interesting idea for a topic to talk about today, mainly because there's replayability in games, and there are our favorite games. And apart from that list is the very distinct idea of being able to play a game again for the first time. Yes. Now, when you started thinking about games that might work for this, mm -hmm. um, um, was there anything that you looked for in games that would kind of trigger to you? Like, okay, these are games that I'm going to want to put on the list. Yeah, like obviously... You know, you can, this goes across kind of all art or mediums is kind of a, a twist of some kind. Okay. Because you story want, wise, story yeah, wise, because yeah. you want to have your mind blown a little bit again yep. to get that feeling of like, holy shit, that's incredible. So that's definitely one of them. And then I'd say the second one is an advancement in technology. Okay. So that when you pick up the, the controller and you go, oh my God, this is way different than ever. Yes. And you have this overwhelming rush of just, you know, uh, how sensational things are. That that kind of feeling, I think, was the other one I was looking so for. So I struggled so much with that, with the technology and mechanics element of it. You know, I, I look at a game and I don't want to... Uh, 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 don't name your picks. I won't name any picks now, yeah. but, but I look at some games where the first time I experienced them, it was amazing, but I, I'm struggling. So, so when you were going through your picks, were you thinking like, this game just as this game or this game and the context that it brought to yeah. games. I'm glad you're saying this too, because they're, it's that it's the yeah. second thing for sure. Yeah. And the other one too is yes, as an adult that I would play this game now, but I also want to be dropped into the feeling that I had 
at that time in oh, my life. Yes. And that and that kind of goes hand in hand. I was unable to separate those sometimes yes. of like some of these older games where you're like, but I also want that feeling. Because if I played this game now, this technological advancement from the 90s now, right. it wouldn't be a technological advancement. Exactly. So you wouldn't have that feeling. You'd have to be dropped into that year as well. Yeah, so that, that makes a lot of sense. I, I tried to stick more to, uh, it, it would be more like the what made the game special was the unfolding of the mechanics within the game, not necessarily a technological advance, but like the building up of what happens and the process of not knowing where it's going to go yeah. and getting there gradually was important to me. I did include a couple items on my list that were more based on being able to erase the feeling yeah, and then, and then experience the feeling again. The one thing I struggled with, with that was the fact that the childhood whimsy that mm -hmm. I had when I played these games the first time is something that even if I completely forgot about that mechanic in a game, I don't think it would work the same on me because I'm not a child anymore. Yeah. I'm a grown ass man who plays rock band real well. <laughs> Are you, could you feel yourself getting worse at rock band? You're like, oh, I used to be better than this. Uh, you know what? When I first picked it up, I thought I was just going to nail it and it, it was, it was harder, but I very quickly was like, I, I can get back on this. In fact, yeah. I think I may be better. I may have the capacity to be better at it because from the time I, I played rock band and guitar hero, mm -hmm. I actually started playing guitar really. Oh yeah. And I think just understanding, which sounds so stupid because they're, they're basically nothing to do with one another, sure. but to understand the rhythm of hitting frets and, and what happens when you go lower down and higher up yeah. in the context of real songs actually did contextualize the notes a little better for me. Sure. That must've been a bigger bummer for everyone else too, as you kept saying over and over again while the clicking of the plastic happened. He goes, I used to be better at this. I used to be, and no one's looking at you. I used to be better at this. No them. one's in the room anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's 1 a.m. <laughs> like what happened? There's no rock band. It's an asylum. Yeah. <laughs> it's Shutter Island. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So, so childhood whimsy was something that I, I wanted to give a nod to for sure. Sure. Um, I thought another thing that, that, played very well into this list was an inescapable or unforgettable story beat. That's okay. also an element of like, oh, if I can only forget, but now that I know playing through it again, I'll, it'll just remind me of what I felt the first time. Totally. Totally. I totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, total, that makes sense. Um, um, the, the, uh, uh, there was also a, a struggle that I had with a lot of games that ended up not making it on my list that were more, you know how often when I talk about games and I'm like, I played through it once and that was my story. Yeah. Um, that's something I struggled with a lot of like decision based games where I'm like, would it be better to forget and just play through it again for the first time? Right. Or sometimes is it cool if you replay a game like that to be able to see what else the game could look like? Mm. So that was something that, that struggled to, 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 to put games on my list. Um, and uh, yeah, that that's kind of it. I think I think that's okay. that's sort of sort of uh, uh, to to give a bit of a taxonomy or, or understanding of where my decisions came from or why they were made. Sure. I wanted to kind of set that up. Any anything else from you that that kind of prevented or or helped games making it to your list? Yeah, it's funny. There's going to be ones on there you could already guess, and you just can't escape that because you want that feeling so much. These these games have left such an impression on you. Yeah, to go back and play for the first time. Did you? tackle this at all did you think i love this game i'd love to go back and play it again but i'm afraid i wouldn't love it the same way that i do now 100 percent. yeah yeah and that that was a struggle that that i didn't know if it would i did those games didn't really make my list yeah because the what made it great wasn't the first experience it was something and even if i erased it from my memory i might enjoy it even less now mm -hmm. because i don't have that nostalgia of like what I felt when I first played it, sure. you know, like a game like freedom fighters that I always talk yeah. about being unbelievable. It's a game I'm, I'm afraid to play again because I don't think it would hold up. And because of that, if it doesn't hold up and then I erase the good memories I had of it and play it today, it's just going to be a dated game. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't have any of those games on my list. Really? Yeah. It's, it's funny. I was thinking about that in conjunction with, um, there's a subreddit, uh, my wife follows where it's, uh, Causing, she's, she's upgraded from player one to wife now. Uh, yeah. Wife or one. Wife or one. Yep. All for one and <laughs> wife for. It's a separate called. <laughs> just, you know, let's move off of that. Uh, it's a separate called causing chaos. And it was, it was a tweet about how um, you should ask, you should ask your, your partner 
if I was on The Bachelor, if you were The Bachelor and I was a contestant, would you have you chosen me? Oh. And then he says, yes. And then you go, no, you wouldn't have. And you should fight about it. And I was like, <laughs> and I said, it's unfair. It, because my player one looks at me and goes like, well, this is probably true, right? And I said, yes, of course. You wouldn't choose each other. It's like, right. it's more like Plinko, like trying to land it in the right like you know spot. It's like, no, it's just so chancy. You know what it, I mean? It's, it's also a very good Pokemon. A very, very good Pokemon. Also, nurse too. if you're British and you say- Nurse. Yeah, oh, nurse, nurse, nurse I'm just saying, I don't want to do that thing where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm discrediting her because you're just pigeonholing it into just the spe the, the type of thing that it is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I went to school, you know, I think my favorite Chansey is Billups. Mm -hmm. Chansey Billups. Chansey Billups. Everyone knows current head coach, of the Portland Trailblazers. Chansey, Chansey Billups. Billups. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. Okay. No, think about it for a bit. Chansey, Chansey the rapper. Chancy the rapper. No, I, I honestly, I stick with Chancy Billups. That's, I think that's, Chancy that's Billups is the one I'm going for. Yeah, yeah. Your first and your best. My first and my best. Um, um, <laughs> just like my player one. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to tell her she was your first? I don't think she needs to find out. Oh, right. Yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Thank God she doesn't listen to this podcast. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God she can't hear us recording this podcast for the most part. <laughs> Um, uh, okay. So Andrew, let's, let's get started. Um, sure. um, we kind of talked about the number of games that we want to do. And I think we, we landed on seven. Sure. I think we want to do yep. seven games and then we can have honorable mentions and things like that. It's a, it's a tough list for me to, to cut off. Um, is that uh, what your Moyle said? List. We have multiple penises. It's more like a Hydra down there. Oh yeah, it is. It yeah. is. But that means when you cut one head off, it grows three more. It's. I'm looking like several knuckles down there. Yeah. Uh, if you ever fell down face first, you could crawl off without using any limbs. Oh, people turn to stone when they see it too. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, except for Perseus. <laughs> Perseus found you. He's hold, there's a statue of you in Florence holding your penis up. Wow. If anyone likes that joke, seriously, write in. That's that is, a really good one. Thank That's you. A good one. We'll have one or two. Yeah. There's always one or two for the, for the, this is, this is actually true. Every time we say no one's going to understand that joke, people love writing in to tell us that they understood that joke, I know. which I'm okay with yeah. because it lets me know that some people out there are actually getting our weird ass references. I just love the idea of the cross section of things you would have to understand to appreciate. Oh yeah. Joking around about that. Retro video games. And Greek mythology. <laughs> and I guess uh, I bet you that, circumcision. I bet you that Venn, maybe not with the circumcision, sure. but I bet you the Venn diagram of like Greco-Roman history and video games is actually pretty high. Otherwise, I, Rise Son of Rome wouldn't have been a launch <laughs> title on the Xbox One. I actually think those tie into each other because of video games. I got into video, True. I got into more history stuff because of video games, because I played a lot of Age of Vampires growing up. Oh yeah. And uh, I, like I started reading a lot. Age of Mythology was a big Age one too. Age of Mythology. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, yeah the, the, uh, Civilization. Oh, civilization right now yeah. would have been a big one. Gandhi was a maniac. We yeah, all know that. Yeah, we all know that warmonger. <laughs> what would he do if you were behind some nuclear missiles? We Every, know the answer to that now. <laughs> Every once in a while I go, I should play civilization. And then inside of me, he's like, no, you Please don't do it. this. Please don't do we this We have a busy yourself. week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll just get lost for a little while. Um, uh, and, and in this year when we don't have time for any games. No. Yeah. Um, do you want to Do you want to start us off with your uh, number seven I would seven love here? to start us off here. Let me pull it up. Okay, so this one is, I would love to play this game again for a first time in a little bit because of the era it came out in and just the feeling I had when I saw it for the first time and was able to run through the forest, or the forest, the uh, the prairies and the grass and oh. to, to see things in 3D for the first time. Uh, It'd be Mario 64. Okay. Mario 64, excuse me, I said it wrong. I love it. And the garden specifically oh. is is the one. This 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 is the conversation we had prior to starting of like, are we talking about childhood whimsy and does that carry over? And if, if it does, then this is almost number one on my list. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I didn't really have as much room for the childhood whimsy picks, but if it were, I legitimately think this would be the number one pick. Yeah. To capture that feeling, to bottle that feeling would yeah. be just a remarkable thing. Uh, when, when, when cynicism rises and you get older, it's really amazing to feel something so natural, natural joy. Yeah. Like that feeling. I, uh, it's, it's so weird because when I think back to the feeling of playing that game mm -hmm. and exploring 3d space and the, the, the freedom that it, it gave me. It felt like video game, like no other video game had ever felt before. It yeah. gave me this feeling of as though my, my, my physical person in real life was also released to the world in yes. some way. Just the fact that my imagination can be, can run rampant in this space. Mm -hmm. I was like, the possibilities are endless. It oh, was yeah. this real, 
I've never had so much faith in humanity. <laughs> I've never had so much faith in the world. I was like, who knows what else we're going to do? Yeah, you're playing this game and you're like, good God, this Clinton administration is going to go great. <laughs> uh, we're definitely never going to go to war again. There's not going to be a couple of economic recessions. Br bring up politics, though. Do you think that there was a similar feeling go on. in the zeitgeist yeah. when, no, when we put someone on the moon? Oh, yeah. I Yes. I think at that point they thought everything is going to be good from here on out. Right. It's like we did it. We Look did it. it. And, Which and we're and, 20 plus years away from World War II. Yes. This is like, yeah. we're never going to go back into any nonsense like that. Right. We are now looking up and ahead and right. forward. There's there's always that argument of like, and this is not something that we need to talk about. So sure. uh, just listen to it and then we'll move on. Okay. But the whole idea of like, of like, I can't believe we spent all this money on space missions, on putting people on, on the moon yeah. when there's so much going wrong at home. Sure. But like what that does for morale, I, I'm like, that's such a fuck yeah moment. That's yeah. like Eagles screaming and, and uh, 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 the American national anthem playing. Oh yeah, no, but Hulk Hogan playing it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's playing, uh, I'm a real American. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's very close to like pizza party after the layoffs, like at the mm, office. Yes, you're yes. Like, you're like, yeah, but there's pizza. And you're like, fuck yeah. That's true. <laughs> I mean, we can make fun of pizza parties, but they do have pizza. They, and everyone likes pizza. That's, that's, that's the, the thing. thing that unites us all. If they had discovered on the moon more pizza, people would have been like, oh my God. When you're sitting outside mm -hmm. and you're looking up at the night sky nightly. and it's a full moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do this nightly? Yeah, it's a full moon every night for every, me. Every I'm every living in hell. <laughs> I, am a, I am a werewolf. It's dangerous. <laughs> It looks like a big slice of cheese pizza. It does look like a cheese pizza. A yeah. cheese pizza. A cheese pizza. Sorry, I'm trying to express no, but my that's, accent. But I grew up in. That's the point, Andrew. Like Cockney. Even our friends from uh, Liverpool, old, yeah, look up and they see the cheese pizza up there too. And do you that's think what the, unites us all. <laughs> do you think, yeah. Do you think that was like that? They're like, I was looking up there and I was like, Ringo, do you like this moon? And he's like, I do like this moon. All you need is pizza. <laughs> I should call John. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> Oh, oh this wow. Post, this post oh, he's just last week. Yeah, he's like, wow, he's dead. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, wow. What this happened? Is, Sickness? I, no. <laughs> I was thinking that this is what inspired the Beatles to be who they are. Oh. So speaking of the Beatles, did you see this horrific music video that they put out? No. So the the part of the ongoing uh, Get Back uh, documentary series uh -huh. that Peter Jackson did, um, they found this tape of something John Lennon had been working on that the Beatles had been working on uh, post separation, and he was working on his temper against his wife. Or yeah, yeah, no, he's world peace, my oh, man. No, okay, okay, absolutely, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is such a weird thing. We have to. I know our interest on that. Um, and uh, and so they came to. It was a song that they were working on as the Beatles, and it seemed like John had kept working on it post breakup. Okay. And so they found a tape of it, and with modern technology, they were able to like completely clean it up, and it sounds amazing. Interesting. And so the current Beatles, they found a George Harrison version that he was working on, and then the current Beatles that are still alive kind of finished it, oh, and they put wow. out a song. And it's it's cute, but they made a music video with the current Beatles at the age they are, but with video of the uh, of John Lennon and George Harrison as young men in the thing and it is ghastly. Really? Like, it is so it's not even good. It's just like what oh, is see there this? I feel like there's a good idea there. Sure. And oh, maybe yeah. they missed it. But it, I'm going to watch it. You should I'm you should jack right off. <laughs> you should. It's John Lennon being very silly. Uh-huh. And they and it, you just can't help but like and Paul's like looking over like and they're singing and you're like what is happening? <laughs> A little uncanny valley. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's a it's a little spooky. But I'll, yeah, I'll check it out after this. Yes, maybe during this. Well, yeah, on, just on watch it. Everyone pick. take a second yeah, yeah. for a bit. Yeah. Um, okay. So my number seven here. I moved a few things around because okay. I had a couple things that I wanted to add. But my number seven is, I. This one's tough because there were three games that I could have picked here. Okay. Because I wanted a spot for a walking sim. Because oh. walking sims basically are story only. And yes. the first time you play through them, there's there's really no reason to go back and play it again. But of the three, and I'll, I'll mention the next ones in or the, the ones that I'm not choosing in my honorable mentions, but I'm going to go with Firewatch. Ah, I think of all of the walking choice. sims that we played, you and I really got into them early on in this podcast. Of all the ones yeah. that we played, Firewatch seems to be the one that just stuck with me the most. Mm -hmm. It has the the love of exploration, the mystery of something going on, uh, kind of a twist at the end that really gets you going uh, uh, and really gets you, <laughs> really, really gets you going. The fire wasn't only happening in the forest, it's oh, happening in my loins. And I said, watch this <laughs> from over there in your Firewatch tower. Um, explains the ending. It does explain the, why, she, why she left me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if there's anyone out there who hasn't played oh, Firewatch, by the way, it paused this <laughs> pause this it holds up completely yeah. it's an unbelievable game um uh and one that i remember very fondly unfortunately because i would like to forget it and be able to play it again that's going to be my number seven 
That's oh, that's so interesting. Okay, so that's your number seven. I, th- this is a pick I don't have on there, so stop me if you do. Okay, but in conjunction with that, Gone Home. So that was one of the. I may as well just say them now. The three that I was going to okay, choose yeah, yeah. between was Firewatch, Gone Home, and What Remains of Edith, Edith oh, Finch. Yeah. I think Edith three Finch. of my favorite walking sims that I played. I completely agree with all of them. Gone Home is a very special one because it was uh, my my now player one uh, or my now wife, old player one, I guess. Uh, we played that together in like oh, one of our first cool. dates cool. and like was in my apartment playing it. It was when she was still faking the idea of uh, sharing interest with me, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was when, when you, when, when you guys finished playing, did she uh, put her controller down, look over at you and say, I should have <laughs> gone home, gone home with you. Oh. oh yeah, no, but it's a very special time. And I've, that game will always hold more weight because of it. It's kind of like going on a first date to a movie that was, bad but you like oh i always love that sure because it yeah. reminds me of something yeah nice. that makes a lot of sense yeah. i think the reason i chose firewatch over gone home yeah. is because when gone home came out the idea of of treating uh uh of walking sims in general of the mystery of them of the pacing of them of the of the treatment of homosexuality in mm, games as yeah. well family life kind mm-hmm. of like like dollar storylines was relatively new but i think in the context of all games now uh i think gone home isn't remembered as fondly because they could have, they should have taken a bigger swing with the ending and they didn't completely. And I they think dance that, around it. Yeah. They dance around it. And I think yeah. that that playing it today, even if I forgot everything about it, if I'm playing it in the context of games, uh, I think that would age more poorly than Firewatch did. I completely agree. I would have chosen Firewatch as yeah. well. It's not on my list, but that's, that's a great, great cool. choice. Cool. So okay. what's your number six? My number six is going to be, um, okay. So if the the world of Pokemon never existed oh, and I never had heard oh of Pokemon. Oh my God. I would have absolutely killed to play Pokemon Red for the first time I love time that. Ever. I love that. I did the idea that just, it's not even that individual game is mm-hmm. that the universe, because up until that point that I played that game, that universe didn't exist to me. Sure. And to, to, to capture the amount of obsession I had over 151 oh, yeah. yes. Pokemon would have just blown my mind if I cared about anything that much now. Yeah. Like, I would have absolutely loved that. The one where you stay up late, under your covers, oh, playing yeah. a Game Boy, just because you can't, it's hot in your hands. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. You can't get over it. I just, that level of obsession and care and uh, that I put into this universe, I die for that. So, so yes. it's, it's interesting because a lot of my picks, um, um, I, I almost... I worried about forgetting about a game and then playing it today and it not having the same effect mm-hmm. because I'm basing it on my age and my sentimentality now. Yes. And I would worry if I erased the world of Pokemon and played the Game Boy version now today, mm. that it wouldn't have had the same effect. And then that that memory of it would go away for me. Now, yeah. if we're playing it and we're, we're just trying to go back to the feeling that it gave me, then absolutely. That, like Super Mario 64, yeah. would be up there as like number one almost. Yeah. Number one or two. Yeah. yeah Love that pick though. It's easy to choose the first game that introduces this world to you. I wasn't young enough to play like Super Mario for the first time. And it was like, what the hell is this? This is unbelievable. So mine is very much in the middle of like picking up that momentum. Pokemon Red is right perfectly my generation where I got to play it as a kid and was introduced to this whole new world. Do you you think if you played it today, like actually for the first time, do you think you would have it in you to beat the whole thing? Do you think it would still play to your sentiments in gaming? Oh, that's a really good question. My my initial answer is yes. I think yeah. I think so. I also am kind of a completionist, so I think I True. would want to get to the end, even yeah. if I'm racing through parts of it. Maybe I wouldn't have enjoyed the whole thing. Maybe I wouldn't have struggled as much. Sure. Because the other one too is like it's early inset of the internet. So like you kind of you didn't have all the answers at your yep. fingertips all the time. You yep. still had to struggle a little bit. Whereas now you're like, yeah, there's this guy that beat in 34 minutes. Yes. Like, okay. Well, yeah, 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 fun. yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. I get scared of Lavender Town all over again. Of course. I mean, yeah. we're all going to. <sighs> It's the scariest, one of the scariest moments of game. Marowak just bursting through his mother. Uh, no, Cubone, no, Cubone, Cubone bursting, bursting through, through Marowak. Marowak. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Oh, my favorite story in all of gaming. <laughs> um, um, something that I never want to forget. Yeah. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> Her skull's still on my head. Just blood on every wall. <laughs> just the breath of like like the hollow echoing from his perspective of his mom's skull still on He's him. in a cage of his mother's skull. <laughs> Oh, using like beating people to death with her femur. It's yeah. fucking wild. It's just like, it is a really, like change the characters around. And there was a feral man running through the forest, <laughs> like as a, as a monster that you would create in your brain yeah, yeah. of wearing the bones of his relatives that, you know, is so stress trauma induced that he would just kill you. That's Cubone, except he's adorable and cute. I mean, depending on the actor who plays this character you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, what if it's Will Forte? 
Oh, that's great. Be adorable and cute. <laughs> that's true. He's so cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. He should really play Sirico, though. I think he could do it. I think he would do a really, like, as a serious role. Yeah, I think he could do it really well. But if it's like Willem Dafoe, you're like, Jesus Christ. If it's Willem Dafoe, huh. he'd never be able to be a serial killer. Because as soon as that guy walks in a room, I'm like, that guy's eating people. That, <laughs> what, that guy right there, check his teeth right now. He's eating people. I know <laughs> it. Like the Cheshire cat, his smile just curls <laughs> all the way up, like the Grinch, all the way up his face. And you're like, I've never eaten anybody. You're like, oh, fuck. That's what, that's what you'd say. The joke. Judge is like, <laughs> I don't know. He's pretty handsome somehow. Uh, yeah. um, okay, my number six is going to be an obvious one. Uh, uh, one that was just has to be on this list to represent all the other games. Yeah. As it, it's almost like a, a shoe in. But of all of the FromSoft games, Bloodborne would be the one that I would love to forget everything ah. about. There's something so magical in in my memory of this game of going through and not knowing what was around the corner. The way it plays with dream logic and and puts you in places of the map that you wouldn't have expect. Uh, expected the the simultaneous uh, 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 growth of my understanding of HP Lovecraft at the same time mm -hmm. so I could contextualize the world and my favorite thing about FromSoft games is listening to podcasts and reading lore about the areas and the encounters that I had as I'm doing them or just after I do them. And for an entire, for the eight months it took me to beat Bloodborne, I was consumed by it, by the source material, by all the lore on the internet, by Lovecraft, which inspired it and the gameplay itself. All of it was just such a great feeling. And one mm. of the greatest feelings I have in video games, I, it's still in my mind, one of the more replayable games, Yeah, but God, if I could give that up and go play it again for the first time, I'd be in heaven. Is there any more souls like games on your list there aren't no wow so this is the one you chose eh? that's the one that's wow. the one that i chose of all of them. okay yeah yeah mm. i think i think my memory of the first time playing dark souls 2 was unbelievable mm -hmm. but i think that so many things had to go right that yeah. i would worry about doing it again and it not taking that pattern maybe i give up on it and then maybe i never play another from soft game that kind of uh, thing so i was yeah. like i was like i'm good with the way that that happened right i i'm gonna leave that as it is mm. yeah oh that's so interesting okay bloodborne you yep. know i think maybe an answer that people maybe saw coming but i find it very interesting that's the one you chose yeah yeah along yeah that list yeah yeah okay all right so my next one is gonna be hmm which one should i choose okay you know what i'm gonna choose something that i don't think people will see coming okay there was a mobile game from a couple of years ago called oh wow yeah i know i really surprising it's called Plants versus No No. Uh, it's it's <laughs> WhatsApp. It's, it's called good. WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Instagram. It's pretty <laughs> good. Um, is around the world in eighty days. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something I mentioned years ago yeah, on a I top remember. ten list. That saying like I just loved it. This was another one became a painful obsession for me. It's another one kind of like Pokemon, but as an adult man, yeah. where I'd be like at work going like, you know what? I think I'm going to take another bathroom break so I can be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and in this one, it's as close to like a walking simulator that you can get. It's not a walking simulator. Uh, it's kind of like a roll, rolling the dice, like a board game sure. type thing that would open up another story. Sure. And the best part about the game was just the the aesthetic of it was so beautiful. So if if you never played it, it's based on the book, the same title, um, which was a book I loved growing up. Okay. And so that was a huge part of it as well. There's this beautiful like noir aesthetic from like the 30s with this music that's very propulsing, yep. but like, like a full orchestra and it's just beautiful to listen to. And so it was you as a, as pa Passport 2. As Me? A, yeah, you, you're playing Passport 2, the 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 wonderful valet oh. to uh, Monsieur Fogg okay. uh, as he makes a bet about traveling the world around in 80 days. Uh-huh. Man, that would be a boring book today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just thinking about that now. Someone gets a private jet. <laughs> yeah, days. I think I can get a negative day. Wait, let me find out. Um, and you, tr you, you have a limited budget and you have limited space in your cargo and you can travel around the world. The thing is, there are seemingly hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ways you can do this. Right. And not everything in success of arriving back in New York in under 80 days is the most interesting part. Some of the most interesting parts of the story were my failures and running into characters in uh, Antarctica or dying in Africa. You can die in this game. Like interesting. You can, like it is, there is so interesting and the amount that is in there that makes it incredibly replayable because because games might last 40 minutes. Yeah. But you want to go back and pick it up and go like, okay, let's go north this time. Oh, let's go. Okay, let's go to Norway this True. time. True. Let's go to. But you now know. you've played it so much that you've kind of poked at all the corners and you kind of know all the results and yeah, being except able to. You're like, can I do it in 20 days this sure, time? Sure, sure. Can I do it in whatever? But you also want to find all these stories like, and you as Passport 2, who is kind of like a jack of all trades, 
you can get into a boxing match. You can fight bears. You can, but <laughs> I can also paint. I can fall in love. I can leave my, the, the valet that I, that I, or uh, Monsieur Frog that I'm looking after to fall in love and leave the whole thing. Like all of it's very, very interesting. And I just, I have not had that feeling in a game where I just could not put it down because I couldn't stop thinking about That's it. That's amazing. Yeah. I got to give it a shot. I was thinking, uh, I got stuck in my elevator this week uh, oh, that for sucks. about an hour. Mike is a personal elevator in his place. I yeah. do, I do, and I, and and everyone says just take the stairs, and I say no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, you're, you know, the stairs money is a thing where it's like, oh, you have stairs. Yeah, who am I? No, I don't oh, have stairs. I have an elevator. That's that's hilarious. You still have stairs? Do you have to use them? <laughs> oh, okay. Goodness. What are you claustrophobic? <laughs> uh, but I was, I I pulled out my phone and I I had deleted Slay the Spire from my phone because ah. I was wildly addicted to it. Could would have loved to have played around in there, mm -hmm. uh, but to also just have a mobile game that I can play. For from time to time i might need to check that one out yeah you do it's just it's a wonderful it's it's almost like a choose your own adventure because it's a lot of reading but you really get in through all about the story yeah i like that i like yeah. that a lot i will uh I, I might actually give that a shot uh my number five is a whimsy pick but it's okay. a whimsy pick that wasn't based on something like uh, uh exploring 3d space for the first time it was just something that was so weird and unlike anything i had played before that going back and playing successive entries in the franchise to me Felt like a little bit of diminishing returns, but by golly, even if I could play that game again for the first time today in its in its in its original form, I think it would give me a similar sense of whimsy because I'm like, shit, I didn't even think video games could do this. Like I was struggling to figure what I was looking at. And it's Katamari Damacy. Oh, wow. The first time I played that game, it felt like I was getting an insight into Japan that I didn't know existed before. Like Japanese gaming culture it just felt so different and so new. And it was funny and weird and uh, uh, kind of depressing because mm. of the relationship between you as as the prince and and your dad, the king of all cosmos, who's like a like kind of an abusive alcoholic. <laughs> it's, oh, it's really weird. Yeah. But but the 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 I remember playing that game and just being like, I feel like I have a secret that no one is going to understand. And you'd meet random people who knew the game and it just felt like an immediate yeah, like, connection yeah, yeah, yeah. you had to that person. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's a really good choice. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's really high up there. Yep, I love that one. Did you oh, play Katamari? I did, yeah. I did. It just takes you to a new world. It really does. You know, it's like opening a door you didn't know existed. Yes. Yeah. And, that's and then really the, cool. the first time you, you know, you, you, you're you rolling the Katamari around and it's getting bigger and bigger and you pick up a cat and you're like, oh my God. But the first time you pick up a human and you're <laughs> like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> it just, and it that build up is also part of the process of being able to play it again for the first time and be like, I can't believe I just picked up a fucking car. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, when I play a new version of the game and I'm picking up paper clips, I'm like, I really can't wait till I can pick up cars because I know it's coming. <laughs> I know. Uh, but it'd be cool to do that for the first time for sure. Yeah, they need to do that horrible uh, conceit that we hate about video games. So in the beginning, you can pick up everything. Yes. And then your powers are reset. Yeah, exactly. After exactly. the first level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Okay. Um, all right, let's go with, for my next pick, I'm going to go with, okay, I'm going to take something obvious that people are know I'm going to say. I'm going to say Bioshock. Okay, this is my next pick as well. So oh, let's perfect. Yeah, let's yeah. discuss Bioshock. And in there, I have Bioshock Infinite kind of in parentheses. Okay, sure. But Bioshock 1 is definitely the choice. Okay. Uh, you know, we could get to the twist at the end, and that's important. And if you don't know what we're talking about, please stop listening to this podcast and go play the game. <laughs> uh, it's very old. Uh is that mostly it is the world that's created. Mm -hmm. To be a part of Rapture, to be a part of the era and the year that it was in uh, with the styling and the architecture and the costumes yep. and the everything. That's all one thing that I just can't get over. Sure. Now, the second thing is the fall of Rapture yep. and what has become of the people. And then I think that's all fascinating yeah. too. And the characters that have been created as their own little gang lords of areas that are doing things as, as you visit. I just... It is so funny that you could love a game so much and while also in the same breath going like, well, it's not perfect. Uh -huh. Like the control is going to suck. It's weird fighting people. Yep. And even though that is the majority of the game, I don't care. Yeah. I would go back and play it. I was so enthralled by this game. It is probably the game I finished the most mm. because every time I'd meet someone, I'm like, you got to play this game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just, I absolutely loved every second of it. I, it's, it's, it's fun to, uh, you know, you bring up the, the combat and how it wasn't perfect and how mm. the gameplay wasn't perfect. And that to me makes it a prime candidate for this list because I'm like, Sure, it's it like it's aged, and I think a lot of games age. And when we put this out on Twitter to get some some recommendations yeah. or some some suggestions or or picks from some some of our listeners, which we'll get to after ours, uh, a lot of people picked current games, and I think that's because mm. to go back and play an older game with bad mechanics, you may 
you may completely forget what was ever good about the game yeah. in the first place. Yeah. Now, because Bioshock, even when we were playing it for the first time, the mechanics weren't great. I feel like that kind of makes it timeless mm. where it's like oh, they don't really get in the way. They're just kind of there. You know, you're not playing the game because it's fun as much as you're playing it because it's enthralling. You know, I think about Bioshock is one of the games that has as many moments of do you remember when this happened yeah, as yeah. like any game I played? Yeah. Do you remember when you saw the crying mom and there was the gun in the basket? Do you remember when you're coming down in the bathosphere for the first time and you're like, what am I experiencing? Do you remember? Would you kindly, do yeah, you remember yeah. when Atlas, like all this stuff is just so f to, to experience it again for the first time was to experience for the first time was, was in one game gave me like, some of the most memorable experiences in a game all within one. Like, I don't know if there's another game that gave me that many shell shock moments uh, relative to mm -hmm. Bioshock. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I, I, it's amazing how much things are ingrained, like just stamped into my memory yeah. from this game. And I, you know, like we haven't even talked about the big daddies and the little sisters uh -huh. and like those, that became like an iconic, yeah. you know, look and costume. And I, it's so funny. Whereas like, you know, people will decry movies of being like, oh, everything's a sequel now, but yeah. video games are very much sequel based. Sure. You know, it's really hard to start new now, stories. Now, especially. Yeah. Everything is, you know, 10 plus now at this point. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, I, I can't believe that they would look at Bioshock and be like, yeah, we shouldn't touch that. It's a sacred cow. It's done. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's, it's tough. Like, I, I think it's, I think it's an ownership, like an IP issue as much as anything else. Uh, like Judas is coming out. Ken Levine's new game. Judas yeah. is coming out because he doesn't own the rights to Bioshock. I don't no. think anymore. I don't know where they are. They're kind of in purgatory, but uh, we'll get a spiritual successor in Judas, but who knows if it'll be the same. I mean, Ken Levine's done to other talk. games yes. and they're not all Bioshock. Yeah, they're not all Bioshock. That's yeah. for damn sure. So yeah, that's, I just, it is special. It's special. It came out at a really perfect time too. And man, I'd love to play that game again yeah. for the first time. Well, that, so that was my number four pick. Do you want to go then to your number sure. three? Sure, I can go to number three. Let's go with, mm, mm, mm. let's go with Resident Evil 4. Oh, great. Wow, yes. that's, oh, that's such a good one. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. There are moments that are very specific in this game that you'll go like, I, I can never get scared by this again because yes. I know it's coming. Yeah. Specifically, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say which dogs go through windows, <laughs> but you know, I'm talking about one of them. Yeah. And you know, inside of that, it, it, it's, it's so different of a game than anything I'd played previously. And you felt scared. You felt like the character yeah, going yeah, through yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You felt like you were alone and you had these low supplies. And I just, that feeling of like, you could feel your heart racing while yeah. playing a game. Oh, it's a special thing. Yeah. It's interesting because my... Because I'm not a huge fan of s jump scares, mm -hmm. I like the dread in a game, but yeah. I don't like jump scares. Judge um, Dredd had a game? Judge Dredd did have a game. Oh, it's not bad. It's probably good. It's pretty good. Almost as good as the sequel uh, to Judge Dredd. The movie. What, was the, what was the sequel? Dread. dread. Just Dredd. Dredd with Carl Urban. He hadn't, he hadn't passed the bar yet. No, he was not, no. A, he was not a judge. <laughs> he was just a jury and executioner. Yes, he did. Yes, it was yeah. just that one. That sequel's good. It is good. It is good. It yeah. is good. Good concept. You know, it has that uh, 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 assault on precinct thirteen. Oh wait, is that the one? Yeah, all one building. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That kind of, I don't think that's assault on precinct thirteen. But there were there were uh, all those movies where it's anyway, the raid. Where, yeah, the raid. The raid is yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, uh, uh, Snowpiercer, that kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Cool concept. Um, Die Hard. Die Hard's a good one as well. Okay, are we going to stop naming stuff or? Um, do okay. I have any other yeah, movies that I liked? Else? Else? What are other good movies? Spider Man into the Spider Verse is a good movie. Sure. Uh, Jaws was a great movie. Jaws, yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, a I guess that all happens in one place: the ocean, the ocean, the yeah. ocean, the yeah, ocean. The, mostly. And, and, and one one setting. That's all you need. A lot of people, and this is gonna, I think this is gonna rub people the wrong way. An opinion that. Hmm. Mm. Uh, the like Godfather to... Part Two. Yeah, it's a really good movie. Wow. Yeah. That's what you're saying, eh? Shawshank Redemption. Mm. Real good movie. Yeah, real good movie. And I don't want to like ruffle feathers or anything like that. No, no, I don't think I don't think you would. That's not you. But the not Godfather the Part One was also a good movie. Wow, he's saying I'm it. I'm sorry, and and I think. Yeah, say it. Godfather Part Three was a bit of a departure. I didn't <laughs> like it that much. I just like I don't want to piss people off wow. or anything. You're Sofia you're Coppola wasn't perfect in it. Wow, you're really saying that? Eh? You're gonna put that into a microphone? And that you don't Andrew, like Godfather you know three. me. You know me. I do know. I you. don't say things unless they. I mean them from the core, and I understand what I'm saying. I understand the emotion that I'm dragging out of other people when I say things like yeah. this. I don't say it flippantly. No. I know what I'm doing, and I think it's time we speak about it. Right? Yeah. I think, Godfather yeah. two is really, really good. Yeah. Godfather yeah. one is really, really good. Not enough people say like 
Is there any sequels that are better than the original? Go, right. You know, I think Godfather 2 might be better than Godfather 1. <gasps> Stop See, the press. Andrew, like, like this is, I know, yeah. I know that you're coming from a good place with this. Thank you. I know that it's you're- It's a safe space here. It's a safe space here. We need to be able to say these opinions. Yes. We yes. do. It's important. It's important. It's Someone important. has to say it. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> your legs could not be more spread if you tried. <laughs> I can't stop looking. It's like you're proposing to me. I was like, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? So that's a special for YouTube over there. That's a special for YouTube. Um, um, yeah, the, I love I love jump scares. Yes. I, I mean, I you love jump scares? jump scares? You've been so lying to me? For me, playing through the Resident Evil games the second time makes it more enjoyable to me. Right, because uh, you know it's- Because I know yeah. it and I can kind of have a little bit more fun with it. Yeah. But I'm I, surprised you're not one of these people. There's a really big thing about people watching horror movies after they've read the Wikipedia article. I, I watch them alongside where's the jump sometimes. Oh yeah, where's the jump with the timing? Yeah. Yeah, they time the movie and so you can see when it li lines up and go like, oh, this jump's scary in a couple the seconds. The only problem here. is sometimes it's like spoilers, so you're not gonna know when these jumps are. And I was like, well, what the fuck? I need to know when they are. <laughs> Spoil the movie for you. Go, Spoiler, what? Godfather 2 might be better than Godfather 1. You're like, no, no. God damn it. Um, my number three yes. is going to be a game that I've talked about a lot on the podcast. I don't think you've played it. I tried to get my mom to play it. I got my brother to play it. Case of the Golden Idol. Oh, yeah. The reason why it's so good is because you don't know the mystery and you're playing as you're playing, it's unfolding and the puzzles only work if you don't know the solutions to it. And there's always at the start of a level, this feeling when you look at it and you're like, there's too much going on. I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. with this, but slowly you, the understanding creeps in right. and that feeling of mastering what was once just a hodgepodge of information feels so good. And when you put the story together based on this weird obtuse puzzle mechanic, uh, and that informs your understanding of the context of the story, it's just absolutely brilliant. And, mm. and I know a lot of people out there haven't played it. And if you haven't, you have to give it a shot because it is just pitch perfect. Yeah, I, I, Num I number three on my list of all these games, and that's not that's recency crazy. bias. That's just I think it's that's think, from last year. That's from last year. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. That's got to be the newest game on both of our lists. Could be. Has yeah. to be. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So that's your number three. Huh? That's my number three. Okay. So I am going on to number two here, and I am gonna choose. Yeah, I'm gonna choose Red Dead Redemption Two. Ooh. It was tough between choosing between one and two, I'd say. Okay. I don't know how much more I need to speak on this because I, I've made my opinions very clear. So have you. You hate it. I love it. Well, I don't know if I would say that I hate it, Andrew. You think it's one of the worst games of all time? I mean, someone's got to say it. <laughs> it's almost as bad as Godfather 3. <laughs> or Rocky 5. Rocky 5. Um, yeah, it's 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 a really special game. Men I, in I Black think that, 4. The, which one? Men in Black 4. Men in Black 4. Did they make 4? I think it was not the one with... Um, Four. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, the Europe one uh, with Tessa Thompson yes. and, and Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, that Together was again. Holy smokes, that was bad. Yeah, uh, what were they thinking? Um, did you ever hear though in the, those Sony leaks, which I just those emails are fascinating to me uh -huh. that they wanted to do Jump Street. Yes, it's, which would have been oh, unbelievable. That was such a good idea. I'm like, someone sent that email and just understood. Did yeah. they just get movies? Absolutely. Yeah. Ah, uh, just I. Yeah. So good. Um. Okay. Uh. It's just it, what what what's there to be said about this game? You know, it's it's its scope is incredible. Every little corner and detail is like manicured, and there is something interesting happening in every corner. And then on on top of it, it's not that there is a big twist at the end. By any means, a character dying is not a twist. Yeah. But it's, especially when they tell you it's going to happen, they tell you more before halfway yeah. through the game. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, He's yeah. sick. Yeah. You know. I think it's also remarkable in a video game to do something that is not like, and he was shot to death. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Or yeah, a crazy guy, a chainsaw to my press, something yeah. like that. It is that in a very normal way, an illness, you know, killed a good man, depending yeah. on how you play. The, the weird thing is that they chainsawed him after he died. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that like Micah came by and like blew his brains out after he had yeah. died. I was like, man, that guy He sucks. said, I've been waiting for this, he said. <laughs> and it's just like, ditch, <laughs> ditch. <laughs> I, it's just, I think to bring a real world outcome into a video game sure. makes it so much more profound and like impactful. Uh -huh. And, uh, and I, I do feel that it was more of like the story of a one man's life Yes, that you felt like you were in full control of. I, I just think that's a remarkable feeling. And to go back and play, 
which I have done multiple times, probably to less and less sure. results to go back for a first time would be unbelievable. So you're, you're saying more story based because of this. Absolutely. Because, because the game is so big that I almost feel like replaying it wouldn't serve much of a purpose mm. because you're always discovering new things, even if you put hundreds of hours into it. Yes. But I get what you're saying from the story perspective. There were moments in it that I found incredibly impactful yeah. that uh, uh, you only have so many moments like that in art period. Mm -hmm. And that was one of them that definitely stuck with me. Well, honestly, I think you said it better than I did. I, I think that I'm, I'm right there with you. Like there are a lot of things that happen in video games story wise where you go like, <laughs> okay, video games. Sure. Gonna yes. Do? Yes. In the, it never happens in Red Dead where you kind of go, oh, Red Dead 2 specifically where you kind of, it is actually really impactful. It yeah. does actually make you feel something. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to play, I'd like a Red Dead version uh, to reference this play again of like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead where you just play the relative of one person you shot in Valentine. Oh, <laughs> oh, they're coming through again. Here we go. Oh, he's wearing a new outfit. This is not good. Oh, God. oh he's oh. got his bandana up. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Or just plays Lenny. Yeah. Oh, Lenny would be great. Yeah. Just wouldn't it be great to Red Dead Redemption 2, colon, Lenny. Lenny. <laughs> or Lenny's colon. <laughs> I mean, that'd be an even better one. Oh, yeah. When they when his gang starts dying, you, I genuinely was like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Those were some great scenes too. Yeah, especially in Sandini. Oh. Um, okay, so my, that was your number two? That was my number two. My number two is kind of going back to a puzzle game, mm. a game that you can continue to play over and over again, especially if enough time has passed. But I think that the overall effect and feeling of solving a puzzle for the first time is lost the more you play through it, especially with one specific moment in Portal, the original oh, Portal. Wow. I think that each of the puzzles that it sets you up with, kind of similar to Case of the Golden Idol, where sometimes you look at something, you're like, I there's too much information here. <laughs> How the fuck am I going to figure this out? Yeah. But eventually finding your way through a level and feeling like you are the smartest person in the world. You're like, yeah. clearly no one in the world could have figured out what I just did. This game, I, I think the developers didn't even know the solution to this and I figured it out. It was a feeling that you could only have the first time. Some of the jokes, the way they landed were best the first time. And the specific moment I'm referring to is when you think you're going to die and you find a way to break out of the the cycle and portal your way out of the death trap and you just feel like I I don't know if I've ever experienced that in a game where I legitimately I remember going through the to the incinerator and being like shit I can't believe the game's already over this is a funny ending but I'm like I wonder if I could like break the game into not killing me right now. That's all I was thinking. Yeah. And then when I do it and there's voice lines like, hey, wait, you weren't supposed to do that. I'm like, oh shit, the game's still going. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I yeah. legitimately think thought it was over and then it kept going because I thought I broke the game. It was a really interesting feeling for me. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. Yeah, that's a portal I didn't even think about. That's a great choice. So that's your number two. Yeah. Okay, my number one is gonna be, I'm very curious what your number one's gonna be. Yeah. Uh, my number one is going to be Metal Gear Solid. Part three. Oh, Metal Gear Solid, the first one. Yes. Well, the PS1. Well, Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it is going to be for a lot of different reasons. Uh, it felt like a story that was serious. Yes. And where video games had not been relatively serious. They were either comical or, you know, like, or, or fanciful in some way. Yeah. Or fantasy. Or they were so aggressively over the top with, like, their tones that even as a kid, I was like, you know, it's hard to play, like, Final Fight and go, like, this is a serious game. True, true. You know, even as a kid, I was like, yeah, this is kind of stupid. I love it. You know serious, what I mean? but also what made it so cool was complicated. Yes. Like stories were like the princess has been kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Go save the princess. It's not like the princess was kidnapped, but the person who kidnapped it is actually your clone. And it yeah. works for the Kali Lule low. And yeah. there's this <laughs> one armed guy who set up something. And you're like, what the fuck is happening right here? I know it's, it's, it's crazy. And then on top of that, it's kind of has a little bit of everything. It has twists. Yep. Oh, I got to put my memory card. Another thing. I yes. my, oh my God. That's yes. kind of crazy. It had the combat that was felt so advanced at the time to the, the stealth side of it to hide in a box and all these kind True. of things that, like unbelievable and then if you dispose of a body you got to put them in a locker and oh that feels so so cool yep. and then on top of that it's a story that was worth coming back to and yeah. worth you know jumping in and so much so that we have many games about it now i just think metal gear solid was like absolutely one of the more peak video game moments of my life and i would love to recreate it i can't believe i missed that one that I one's can't so that one's so like it, it definitely should be on my list. I was sure it was going to be your number one too. No, it isn't. And uh, I, I don't know why I, I looked past that one completely, but wow. yeah, I, you know, you talk about Bioshock or I was talking about Bioshock and having so many moments that were like 
Like, do you remember when and Psycho Mantis with the memory card and going to the cold area to get the card to turn blue and then the hot area to get the card to turn hot, saving Meryl or not saving Meryl? Yeah. All this stuff yeah. was was unique and confusing and and it felt like an action movie. I remember this was the first game. You and I played it together mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't care if I'm not playing it. I just want to watch it. Yes. I remember the fear of going down the hallway the first time you're going to go meet Gray Fox for, mm -hmm. the, for, for the first time and he's, dist he's dismantled all the bodies. There's blood and everywhere. Blood everywhere oh. the the uh you know metal gear solid 2 uh uh sons of liberty also gave uh sons of liberty sons of liberty i think so okay was yeah i think so i don't know those the subtitles always yeah, get me messed yeah, up yeah. but also gave you a similar moment where like the colonel keeps calling you and and then he it's like he's glitching out and you're playing his ride in for the first time and it, metal gear is very good at that uh uh yeah, I, I I think that's a fantastic pick. Oh, thank you very much. Were, were there any any specific moments apart from the ones that I mentioned? That, that no, you mentioned a lot of them. Yeah. Um, no, you mentioned a lot of them. I I remember very much having to look up what an ocelot was. I yes, thought that was very interesting. <laughs> oh, you, it's a cat. Do you remember the the uh, uh, when you're in prison as Solid Snake and you can use ketchup to make it look like blood, yes. and then the or like hide under the bed that where there's like a couple days and you're trying to trick the guard and you can either hide under your bed, and you're like where'd he go, or you use the blood and he comes in, he's like oh it's just ketchup and yeah, like, it, yeah. like those were so cool. Those moments I, were amazing. I loved it. It was it felt like they they knew there was a user playing the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and really they were playing with you as much as you thought you were playing totally with yeah all right so what's your number one my number one is a still a fairly recent game oh. it's not quite as recent as case of the golden idol but death stranding oh and right. there are so many elements to this that i think lend them that lend themselves to this uh project that we're doing here uh the mechanical buildup i think is the is the best one the fact that you start the game walking places and using little sticks uh, and 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 ladders and and you're helping each other in the environment and by the end of it you're like driving a car and you're getting to reap the rewards of all the work that you put in yeah. because you've built highways and you've got motorcycles and you look at the at the way you used to traverse and how long it used to take you to get one kilometer and now you're covering like thirty kilometers and yeah. not even thinking about it that buildup was so satisfying the story was was wild uh, I don't even know if I loved the story but just. <laughs> having it unfold in front of me yeah. i was intrigued and i loved the the ups and downs of it i loved the weirdness of it i loved falling in love with kojima again mm -hmm. when i thought i was kind of like who knows where this is going to go uh i would love to be able to play that game again for the first time when it clicked for me about 12 hours in which is a weird thing to say because not everyone has 10 hours 12 hours sure. to throw away on a game that they're not loving uh when that clicked i just remember literally the moment i'll never forget is I had loaded up one car with like so many deliveries to do and they were expensive deliveries and I just finished building a highway and I knew that all I had to do was drive all of them back because they were all for like the one of the central knot locations and I just remember feeling so lucky that I got to drive them there and get the experience. I was just like, I'm so happy that I get to wow. do this right now, which was like as close to childhood whimsy of a, uh, yeah. Super Mario 64 as I've ever had as an adult playing games. And, uh, man, I would, I would, I would like to bottle that feeling up and, and get it again. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Two Kojima games at number one for both of us. True. Right? Yeah. Wow. Look at that. How about that? I mean, that, that, that speaks to the auteur. I think that Kojima is of, of, of knowing how to kind of show you this and hit you with that. Sort yeah. Of thing. And yeah. 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 That's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So those are our, our top seven of games we should play for the first time again. Yeah. And we, and we put out a, uh, uh, the, the same question to some of yep. our listeners over on Twitter. I'm going to read some of them right now. Uh, uh, at Quiggin, Quiggins MMA on Twitter said uh, okay. Ghost of Tsushima, which oh, which I get yeah. now. It brought me up a, 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 a made me think about open world games mm -hmm. being replayable. What do you think about that? Is like as like, do you think you would would you rather like say you have a limited number of games you can wipe your memory on? Would you use it on many open world games? I know you've already said Red I already Dead, said Red Dead, but that was because of the story more than yeah. the, the world itself. Because I feel like you can always just go back to an open world and it kind of feels new every time you do it or no. Unless it, unless it has a story that you really love. Yeah. I agree with you. It's kind of tough because it's like, I didn't mention Fortnite. Yeah, you know what true, I mean? True. Like, it's like, well, I can always go back and play Fortnite. Yeah, maybe there's a certain chapter or like an island or something like that that I didn't, uh, that I wanted to go back and play. Uh, but like, 
I, I think for the most part, it has to be a motivating factor, like a story to get you back into it. So Fortnite is, it, that kind of leads to a question that I wanted to ask you anyway, because there is something fun about playing a game like Fortnite or Overwatch or something for sure. the first time when sucking is still fun because yeah. everything is new. Now, I would never want to give up my Overwatch skills and start fresh or something like mm -hmm. that because that feels like a terrible slog, especially at this point in the game. Same with, I'm assuming you and, and Fortnite. Sure. But would, would it ever be the case that a game may makes it onto your list because you'd love to feel what it felt like as a, as a noob at the game, like Tony Hawk pro skater, for oh, example. Yeah, yeah. I mean, remember pulling off a, uh, a 5,000 point combo and that yeah. feeling big, that move, that, that feeling is removed from us now. Now yeah. we, now we, now it's like a, a heroin addict who needs like <laughs> seven needles full in order to feel anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I, I guess that's a good point. I didn't even entertain that idea, but yeah, I, I get, yeah. No, I yeah. see what you're saying. There yeah. could definitely be something to it there. Mm -hmm. Um, what the Famicom said, uh, Bioshock infinite. Hey. I don't think I ever experienced something that could only have that impact via a game. Uh, the way the story is told the big yeah. swing ending, etc. I know people could literally argue that for the first one, but infinite is just super unique. I also want to take a moment. Uh, what the Famicom, they've been friends of the podcast forever. Sure. They've got an unbelievable podcast over there. They interact with us all the time. Uh, they're, they're, they grind the hell out of, uh, 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 you know, social media and putting themselves out, out uh, putting themselves out there for new listeners. If you're listening to this and you haven't checked out what the Famicom, they're hilarious. They're really funny. Yeah. Uh, they've got a very entertaining podcast, kind of a similar vibe to yours and mine where we talk about video games, but it's also just about us yeah. giving the shit. Definitely check them out. Give them a rating and review all that oh, stuff. They've, been, nice. they've been around for a long time. So yeah. what did the Bioshock Infinite? We didn't yeah. really get to talk about it earlier. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of moments. It is aesthetically completely the opposite yes. of Bioshock. It is bright. It is in the air. It's yep. not under the sea. Um, and for the most part, these demented monsters in, in Bioshock 1 that they've been turned into don't aren't really the same in Bioshock 3 because they are more believers and they're happy right. with the idea that what they're doing True. instead of a bit soured and, and broken down. And so I think the, it's, the fear is in their steadfastness. That's, yes. That is, yeah, yeah. It's a cult, not a, a drug. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's just so, it's it's so interesting. I can, those moments of like when you walk in on the first time and you're at Pinkerton, it's the 20s, and you're walking in and you hear the barbershop quartet singing uh, God Only Knows by the Beach Boys. Yes. And you don't pick up one and you walk by, you, but there's a moment you're like, the fuck? That song's from the 60s. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, or, okay. or won't get fooled again. Or there's, there's yeah. like a Rolling Stones song at some point through one of the riffs. It's just, why is that creepy? It is. Uh -huh. And it works in that way to change to the, the air traversal and, yep. you know, I just, sky hook and sky hook and yeah. that horrific way of killing people, which yes. is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That game rips. And that ending is just, it will always be, it's maybe that should have been on my list, but it will always be the, put the controller down and kind of go, what is my life? Yes. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the, I always think about like the end of a, a Homer Simpson, uh, the Simpsons episode where he meets his mom and she has to leave again. And uh -huh. he just sits there on the hood of the car watching the sky. And I'm like, that's what I did watching that game. I was like, <laughs> huh, I'm just going to go walk for a bit. And yeah. Think. I think, I think the cool thing about uh, uh, erasing a game like infinite from your brain is that you get to replay it you get to play it for the first time and then you get the the enjoyment of playing it for the second time and like the brother and sister combo yes. that are running tests on you at every moment to see like oh there are constants he always flips a uh, uh, tails here or like they're 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 uh, uh they're just trying to like experiment with the always a lighthouse always a girl yeah. element of video games which is like really really cool to play through it the first time and not know what those things are about and then the second time and know what they're about it's almost yes. an entirely different experience it really is it's kind of like seeing like uh, you know an agatha christie thing and then going like, okay, I want to watch it again because now I want to find out. That's exactly you know, the little tips. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Um, 8D Turtles says, uh, I know it's a newish one, but Final Fantasy 16 made me oh. ball my eyes out. Amazing story and characters. Uh, one of the, probably the most recent game of anyone uh, uh, that, that anyone's put on. Sure. Here. But, uh, but I'm glad I he that. liked it. Yeah. Uh, we got at Murph's Law. Honestly, I think uh, recently I'd go with Hogwarts Legacy to finally get a proper <sighs> game set in the universe and actually make it feel legit. Uh, and magical was incredible. Just not a big enough fan for I me of, of Harry Potter, but I was happy that they kind of got what would, would have been something they've been waiting for their entire lives to explore an open world based in that universe would have been yeah. amazing. It's, it is, it does blow my mind that like, we're not Harry Potter people. So that game really didn't come up on the podcast very much, but I have so many people in my life that love it and loved that game. Yes. They loved being in that world. You know, they're the people that will go down to Universal Studios to go to Hogwarts. Yes, you know what I exactly, mean? Exactly. And uh, it's just, I, you know, I, I, I heard so many good things about that game. So, yeah. you know, good for them. Happy people are happy with it. Exactly. Uh, 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 
uh, at L underscore Demon Knight says uh, Death Stranding was very special. Thank you very oh. much for, for mine. Because uh, I, I put that one out there as one of my picks. Okay. Uh, in my case, it would be Starfield or Skyrim. I would have to coin toss it. This is another one of those cases where it's like, I feel like Starfield and Skyrim are are easy to experience again. Like you still get a lot out of it replaying it because it's such an open world. But but I do understand, especially with something like Skyrim, like the wonder that I experienced when I first turned that game on. And I was like, this is fucking massive. You can do so much. Everything was new. It was like walking into Charlie and in the cho- or walking into Willy Wonka's cho- mm-hmm. chocolate factory and just like, just like, oh my God, what else can I interact with? So that, that, that one I get. You excited for Wonka? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Ask an answer. You know it's a musical? Even less excited now. It's uh, this new thing with trailers that they hide the fact that they're musicals. Do you think Johnny Depp's going to be in it? No. No? Oh, God, what? I don't know, maybe. Holy smokes. Wouldn't that be like you watch a terrible movie and then he shows up and you're like, oh, come on. It just got more terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like now watching Seven, you're like, this was a disgusting movie. And then you go, and the murder was Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Oh, no, this got worse. I was like going back and playing the Call of Duty that he was in. Oh, shit, I forgot about yeah. that because... He loves when 14-year-olds be- play with him. Yeah, I didn't think about it like that. You're right. I was thought it's when he was being frank. Uh, mm. he, he loved playing Call of Duty. He that loved- is actually true. Oh, Do is you that- remember that in the show? No, I never watched the show. Okay. I never watched the show. No. You're not an early Netflix guy? It was like the Netflix show. Like I, the, the reason people got Netflix. Yeah, no. I, oh, I, no. I, for me, it was Lilla Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the other show that you... I remember the, what the train show. Wasn't there like a train, like an old-timey... Like they're building the railways or something like that. Express. Oh, Hell on Wheels. Hell on Wheels. And I remember you were like, you watching Hell on Wheels? I'm like, no. <laughs> and I was like, you should. Like, you should. And I'm like, okay. It was good. Yeah, I liked there it. you go. I See liked it. Um, uh, and then we got uh, Martin G, 1989, Fallout 3 or Bioshock. And uh, uh, that's- well, Fallout 3. Fallout 3 is, mm. is a good one. Also shared by Steve Vigvari at S. Vigvari oh. on, on Twitter. Fallout 3, The Witcher 3, Death Stranding, oh. Elden Ring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Elden Ring, obviously, could have hey. been a choice. Uh, Death Stranding is up there. The Witcher was one that I actually really enjoyed playing again because I purposely played it making decisions that were opposite to the ones that I made in the first game or the first playthrough. So I got to see so much more of the game. Like The Witcher 2, there's one decision early on you make where you can either side with the elves or not. And if you do, you go on an entirely different second oh, act wow. of the video game than you do. Like you you play a different game. It's it's pretty impressive. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, and then Fallout 3, obviously making yeah. on both Martin's and Steve's list. Uh, similar to Skyrim, just the wonder and whimsy of exploring for the first time was 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 epic. Wow. That's in, yeah, Fallout follow 3, that's a good choice. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so that's that's it for for mm. all of our sentence, Andrew. Uh, any Any honorable mentions that you got from your list? Uh, yeah, I, I've got a couple here. Uh, the Last of Us series. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's hard not to think about that. Last you know? of Us two, especially for yeah. me, I think. I think getting getting to to revisit some of those story beats where it would have been would have been fantastic. Oh yeah, no, I, I did that that whole thing is just just blows my mind. Man, I'm so excited for Last of Us three. Oh, I know, I know. Very amped. Have uh, they announced that? No, like, no. So that's not an official thing that we think is coming. They announced a remaster of The Last of Us Part two, though. Oh, good. Already. Like, we need to, a couple we need of years to, old. We need to fund Last of Us 3. That's make it. us some money. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, so, some uh, 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 honorable mentions for me. Contra 3, mm. just because of that childhood whimsy phase. I, I loved that game, playing that with my brother so yeah. much. Hyper Light Drifter was, was one of the best exploration games I've ever played. And combat was amazing. Shadow of the Colossus, I kind of oh. thought about putting on the list. Except every time I think about replaying it, I don't feel like I'm missing anything playing it again for the second time because I still have the awe and wonder of revisiting the new Colossi. And I also <laughs> recontextualize the story of the game and what you're actually doing. And it lends more of a weight to playing through it when you yeah. know the whole story. Okay. Uh, Mass Effect, for obvious reasons, I ultimately didn't choose it because I've said time and time again that the story that I had the first time was my story. So I don't want to play through that game anymore. Uh, Limbo, Death's Door, um and inscription those are some other ones just a lot of games that i'd love to be able to play for the first time that i think going back doesn't have quite the same effect but i'd like to experience again for the first time yeah wow okay so we you know we got some twitter answers but if you have more out there please let us know at rich grade pod 
At Retrograde Mikey, at Retrograde Andy. There you go. Wow, I did it. I think I started with the email and it just ended up in the Twitter account. Yes. And I'm like, whoa, what the yeah. hell happened there? <laughs> I was surprised by you myself. You can email us, the Retrograde Podcast at gmail.com if you there want to. There we go. That's where you can submit uh, recommendations for new episodes, answers to previous questions we've already answered on this uh, on the podcast, and uh, maybe some requests for games that we do. Absolutely. Well, until then, we can't wait to hear from you because we love every single one of you and we can't wait to talk to you soon. My name is Andrew Baskin, and with me as always is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself, Mikey Aaronworth. This is the the retrograde podcast game over uh andrew if i can get you to just look at this light What's right up? here it's just a... oh. and welcome nice. to the retrograde we're about to talk about our favorite games that we'd love to replay again for the very first time andrew uh is everything okay over there what the hell's going on furnished by sad styles productions i used to be better at this <laughs>